In this video, we demonstrate how to do a co-integration analysis based on the ADL model and the corresponding error correction model. We consider data set Danish data. This is R, the money market interest rate, and we have B, the bond yield. Then we have the first differences, we have the spread, and then we have the ECM term that we estimated using a static regression in the previous video. So that was the video where we did the Engelgranger two-step co-integration analysis. So here's a plot of the two series. We have a SAM beginning of the 70s up until 2003. And this is quarterly data. We want to test if these two variables R and B are co-integrated. We want to do that based on the ADL model and the corresponding error correction model. We assume here that we have already tested for a unit root in each of the two variables and that we cannot reject a unit root. And now we want to test if they are co-integrated, which means that there exists a linear combination between the two variables that is stationary, so that the common stochastic trend in the two variables cancels out. We will start by estimating an ADL, and we will do that for the variable R. So we go to PZGive, we choose models for time series data, single equation dynamic modeling, and then we go to the formulate window. And we're going to start by including three lengths of R, and three lengths of B, as well as B in the contemporaneous period. And then we automatically get a constant included. So this is an ADL 3.3 model. This is the model that we want to start with. Click OK, select OLS, set the sample. Note that we are conditioning on the first observation. So the estimation starts fourth quarter 73, and then it runs until the end of the sample. We click OK, and this is the model we get. So first, we consider the misspecification test down here. And in particular, we note that we have no autocorrelation here. However, there are problems with ARSH in the estimated residuals and some heteroscedasticity. But we're not going to do anything about that here. We will just continue as if this model was a well-specified model. So the first thing we want to do is try to get a more parsimonious model by excluding some of the variables that we have started out with. So this is our general model. We want to get to a more specific, more parsimonious model. And note that even though R is an I1 process, we can actually do standard inference on these coefficients to the lags here, because we can transform the model so that the coefficient here can be a coefficient in a transformed model to a stationary mean zero variable. And that means that we can do standard inference. So we can actually so just note that here we have third lag, maybe also the second lag. These two appear to be insignificant. And we also have a number of insignificant terms in the lag of B. So in general, we would try to remove them one step at a time. But here we're going to skip that part and just go directly to our preferred model. Go back to the formulate window. And in this case, it turns out that we can actually impose zero restrictions here, theta 3, theta 2, and then also phi 3 and phi 2. So we end up with a model that includes one lag of R, and then it includes the level of B in the same period and with a lag. We estimate for the same sample as before. Click OK, and this is the model that we get. Now, there are some problems with misspecification, but again, we will disregard that here and just continue with the analysis. So this is the ADL11 model that we want to use in order to consider the co-integration properties. So recall that we can derive the co-integration parameters directly from the ADL model here. So our co-integration parameter to the variable B, called that beta, is equal to phi 0 plus phi 1. So that's these two coefficients here divided by 1 minus theta 1. And if we plug in, we get, which we can calculate to 0 0.8666. So note that this is the beta coefficient, the co-integration coefficient to B. And this is almost identical. It's a little higher, but almost identical to what we got from the static regression in the previous video. So we could derive the parameter, the beta parameter directly, but in Oxmetrics it's quite easy to get this automatically. So we go to the test menu, we select dynamic analysis, and here we choose the static long run solution. So Oxmetrics in the PCGIF module will assume that this is an ADL model, 
and then directly derive our static Lorentz equation for R. So this is what we have referred to as mu in the lecture notes, and this is the beta coefficient. And note that this, of course, is exactly the coefficient we just manually create, uh, calculated up here. On top of that, we actually get standard errors here that are calculated. It's a quite complicated function of the covariance matrix. But here we get the standard errors, and we can see that this coefficient here is clearly significant. Additionally, we get down here a specification of the error correction term. And this you can copy directly, so I'm going to select it, copy, open the algebra editor, and simply paste the code here. Then we click Run, we go to the data set, and there we have a new variable with the error correction term. So let's just plot it like this. So this is the estimated deviation from the long run uh, equilibrium between the variables. This is our correction term. And note that it's almost identical to the spread that we got up here. Now we can do a plot of the spread. That's our known co-integration relation. Then that the uh, co-integration relation we estimated from the static regression and finally the one from the ADL model. We do like this, and we can see that they are very close, except from the level. We want to test for no co-integration, and we can do that by testing on the coefficient gamma 1 in the error correction model. But we can also do it automatically in PCGIF. We go back to the test menu, select dynamic analysis, and we choose the one here that is called lag structure analysis. We click OK. And this is the PCGIF test for no co-integration. Now, manually estimate the error correction model and then get the same test and also look at the estimated adjustment coefficients and so on. So we go back to the formulate window, click OK, clear the model. And now we need to specify a model, not for the level of R, but for the first difference. And we should not have any lags of dr. Then we want db in the same period. And then we want the lag level, so only lag 1, of both r and b. So this is the error correction model corresponding to the ADL11 model that we had before. Click OK, select OLS. Same sample, and we estimate. So first thing to note here is that the model here, the error correction model, is exactly the same model as the ADL model we had before. It's just a different representation. Look at the log likelihood, 309.7. If we go up a bit, you can see that the log likelihood we got up here is identical. So this is the same model, but a different representation. Now we can look at the PZGIF test for no co-integration. And that is just the t ratio on the coefficient that gamma 1 is equal to 0. So that's the test statistics. And the gamma 1 coefficient is just the coefficient to the lag level of r itself. So it's a coefficient that we get an estimate of minus 3.4 standard error. And here we get the t value, which is exactly our test statistics. And note that this is exactly the test statistics we got from the unit root, the PC give test up here. This is the same test reported. The 5% critical value for the PZGIF test for no co-integration with two variables in the model is equal to minus 3.21. So that implies that here we clearly reject the null of no co-integration. We conclude that the variables are indeed co-integrated. We can look at the coefficient up here and we can see that R, it has an adjustment coefficient, it's negative, and it's significant. So we can conclude also that R here, the short interest rate, is indeed error correcting. The final thing we can do is we can manually calculate the co-integration parameters from the ECM model as well. And beta is equal to minus gamma 2 divided by gamma 1. So gamma 2 is the coefficient to the lag level of B, gamma 1 is the coefficient to the lag level of R. If we plug in, we get, and we can calculate beta 0 0.8666, and that's exactly the coefficient we also got before. We could do the same for mu, and we calculate the coefficient to minus 0 0.0065, 
which is also what we got from the static long one solution. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.